Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to my channel with another reaction video. Today I'm gonna react to Emotional Story Sahabi who wanted revenge from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was a recommendation, so I don't know this Sahabi, I have no idea, so just let's go. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a like and a comment if you love to. So, peace me now. Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Wasallam gathered the people to lead them in Salah. He led them in Salat al-Dhuhr. As soon as the prayer had finished, he returned back to the member. He then stood and addressed the people, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, I am requesting from you all, if there is anyone who has anything upon me, then come and take it from me. I if there is this. any money that I owe to anyone, then please take it from I me know now. This. Okay, if I, know I have this. hurt anyone, or if I have cursed anyone, or if I have been wrong to anyone, or have oppressed anyone, or I have hit anyone, then take your recompense now, take it from me now. And he repeated this again and I again and again. The narrations in the books of Hadith and history are many about what happened at this moment in time. One okay. of them, which is not so strong, but strong enough to give an indication. Narrated in the Majma of uh, the Majma al Zawaid of Al Haytami, he said that one man stood up. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I need to take recompense from you in one thing. The people turned around. They looked at this elderly man. They recognized him as Rukasha. Rukasha ibn, ibn, ibn Wahsan al Asadi, radiallahu ta'ala an. They were shocked. They were shocked because this is no normal small fry. This is one of the mighty companions, one of the senior companions. Ya Rasulullah, on the day of Badr, when you were making the sufuf, you were straightening the lines and you took your stick to straighten the lines and you pushed me back and you hurt my chest. You oh. pushed me back with your stick and you hurt my chest. Ya Rasulullah, I only stand up now because you have asked for it three times. Ya Rasulullah, I want to take back what is my haq. The companions were beside themselves. In all of these narrations, you will see, regardless of their weakness, in Abu Bakr Siddiq stands up, Umar stands up, Sayyidina Ali stands up, one by one, we will take it out on me, ten times on me, a hundred times on me, any money you wish, please don't go to the Prophet what are you doing? One by one, one by one, each time the Prophet is saying, hey, to Sayyidina Ali, your position with me is well known, you don't need to prove anything to me, hey, Hassan Hussein, you're okay with me. I know your position. You don't need to prove anything to me. This is fine. This is what we need to do. Go and bring that stick. Go and bring my stick. The stick was brought. The companions were... What's going on? The stick was given to Ukasha. Ukasha came forward to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ opened up his shirt and exposed his chest. Ukasha took the stick and he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he threw it to the side. And then he kissed the chest of the Prophet ﷺ. He kissed the chest of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I only stood up because I wanted this to be the final ahad between us. I wanted this to be the final thing between us. I just took my opportunity. Bukasha. Bukasha, the giant of the companions. Bukasha, who has already forgiven his sins because he was at Badr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told him, do what you want, I have forgiven you what you want to do anyway, so go ahead and do anything. Okay, Asha, who stood by the Prophet sallallahu and fought by his side, so fiercely that he broke his sword into so many pieces, and he still tried to defend the Prophet sallallahu He said, Ya Rasulullah, my sword is broken. The Prophet sallallahu gave him a branch, a branch, a piece of wood. He said, take this. He didn't question him once, he took the branch, and he used a piece of wood against other people's swords and from the mu'ijaza of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This branch turned into a sword, the sword of Ukasha, which the scholars gave a name to Al-Awn. And he continued to defend the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam with that sword in Al-Badr. And he continued to use it for the sake of the Muslims until he himself was killed, shaheed at the battle of Al-Ridda with Sayyidina Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an. This is Ukasha. Ukasha, one of the mighty people who goes to heaven like bam, like that. He has a past to heaven that we can only dream of, that the companions can only dream of. 
The Prophet ﷺ in Bukhari said, 70,000 members of my ummah will enter Jannah without hisab, without adab, no questioning, no punishment. This green card goes straight through. While the companions are thinking, how does one do that? The Prophet ﷺ said, these are the people who have that perfect tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfect trust. The companions now trying to work it out. How does one get that? What does one do? How? What's the levels required? And what actions? Okay, actually, it's like, you know what? You don't think about this. Ya Rasulullah, pray to Allah, do Allah, make this dua to Allah that He makes me from one of you 70,000. Answer minhum, Ya Okasha. You are from them. You are from them. Is this authentic hadith? He's already been given it. And as I said to you, the rest of the companions can only dream. Because when another one stood up, he said, Ya Rasulullah, and me as well, huh? Sorry, Okasha yeah. got there before you, my friend. And he has. He has got there before all of us. This is Okasha. No. Donate now. No. I want also to be. For real. Inshallah. It made me really emotional because when you know you can go to Jannah, Inshallah, right, with green card as he said you want to know how but it's really simple we have just to to put everything for allah everything everything what we do everything what we think everything what we feel everything it has to be just for allah just for allah just for allah that's why i said when i became muslim i said look if allah wants me that i wear a hijab then i will do it why should I not do it? Why should I please other people of here or in this dunya? Why? If Allah say that we should marry, right? Then the half of the deen is complete. Then why we don't do it? If Allah say to be great in that marriage, you have to do this, 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 this. Why we don't do? It can be just so easy in every single thing. But we just don't understand. Or we just don't want. I don't know. For real, subhanAllah. I really wish for all of us, inshallah. This is amazing. I know that our beloved Prophet ﷺ, he said this, but I didn't remember so good the story. And I didn't know the name of the this companion. But is this really an authentic hadith? Because he was talking about it's weak. If it's weak, I don't know if why they tell these stories, if it's weak. Ah, But yeah. But this is a good example, like there is 70,000 people and more, this is the minimum, without being asked nothing, subhanAllah. Inshallah this will be us, inshallah, oh. inshallah. So thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a like and a comment if you love to and see you in the next video, inshallah. Masalama.